Hello, fellow Divine Feminines. How are you doing out there? I'm doing quite well today. My name is Daniela Jumel. For those who may not know me, if you are new here, welcome. If you are old here, welcome. Nice to see you. <laughs> um, I wanted to make a sort of a brief sort of shout out kind of video, so no cards, um, uh, because I was inspired by uh, a good friend uh, on YouTube. Her name is Goody. I will link her channel uh, below, obviously. Um, she's a psychiatrist and also uh, a divine feminine, and so her experience is particularly special because she understands both the kind of spiritual side of things, but also is a medical professional and deals with, you know, the very difficult aspects of, of emotion and how this all works together. And it's, it's, it's so complex, <laughs> as I'm sure we're all aware. Um, but anyway, this video that she made was uh, all about these couple of people that she knew who unfortunately ended their lives in kind of close proximity to each other and it has been a real struggle uh, for her as you can imagine and you know one of her jobs I would say one of her main things is talking to people who are in that kind of a depressive uh, state and I think that a lot of us who are in the the twin flame community uh, struggle quite a bit with thoughts about that because I know I certainly do and have because we feel so strange we feel very uh, alienated from the world that we once knew um, before uh, and you know I remember not really thinking about you know dying and stuff like that in in such a way um, until um, my divine masculine and I kind of broke up uh, a long, long time ago. Um, I was very young. We were both, well, we were both very young. We were 17. So that was when I sort of became enmeshed in a great deal of depression and sadness and feeling like I can't possibly, I can't possibly go on. This is this is simply too much, uh, for lack of a better expression. I felt very empty and very distressed that I, I what once made complete sense to me in the form of my feelings about my Divine Masculine, just knowing that he was not going to be there uh, for me anymore in that capacity, you know, left me feeling deeply adrift and hopeless. And, you know, bearing in mind my age, um, my family and my, you know, and medical professionals didn't know what to do with me. They kind of treated it like, oh, she's 17 years old. She doesn't know what she's talking about. She doesn't know what she's feeling. She's just overreacting to, you know, something that we all go through. It's part of growing up. You know, that was the attitude all the time. It's just part of growing up. That's what we all endure, you know. So, pat on the head, get over it, kid. You know, that was sort of the attitude. Um, and 
it, you know, while I understand the sentiment, I do, um, it left me nonetheless feeling completely adrift and without meaning to anything. And that feeling of having no, like nothing about yourself or your life has any value, you know, is, is an awful and dangerous place to be um, because it seems that no one and nothing, no one and no thing can bring you back from that. And, you know, as I've discussed in other videos along the way, I, you know, a few years after that, when I was 20, I was diagnosed with borderline personality disorder because these feelings were not going away. I was chronically um, self-harming. I was just, just, and I could not seem to stop doing that. And it just kind of persisted all throughout my life. Um, into adulthood and it wasn't until um, my Divine Masculine returned uh, to my life and said to me ultimately what started this whole process going and whole process meaning recovering from from being labeled and being misunderstood and just feeling like hell all the time. Uh, and he had gone through his own experiences in his life that made him somewhat, um, mm, Hmm, how to describe that? He was rather cold on occasion, um, abrupt, um, not necessarily very thoughtful in how he delivered important information and messages to me. There were times when I, you know, I think back on it now and go, man, you know, that was so painful. <laughs> you didn't have to say it like that. But, you know, there are times when the message was delivered forcefully, but that came from a place of love from him because it ultimately helped me. So I'll just briefly kind of explain and set the scene. It was, um, it happened the date I looked it up in my journal, so I know specifically when it happened. It happened January 25th, 2021. So, just over two years, about two and a half-ish years ago. Uh, I was sitting in a coffee shop and we were chatting over Instagram. And I'd said something rude about myself, just, you know, like normal, because that had become a habit. Ever since all of this happened between us, I got real good at calling myself all kinds of names and feeling like garbage and just staying there, just feeling gross all the time about myself, especially, but also the world around me and everyone in it. You know, I was just feeling horrible and he said in the chat, you know, you really need to learn to love yourself. And I was sitting, yeah, outside in, in the rain. It was freezing rain outside and gray, very, very gray. And it was in the in kind of the heat of the pandemic. So um, I had to sit outside. There was no choice because the coffee shop where I was was only allowed to have like two people inside and the rules for occupancy were, were very strict at that time. Um, I don't believe I was even vaccinated yet because they didn't have them yet. Like it was that 
early on in the process. And um, when he said that, I had this horrible just cramp in, in my stomach because I knew that he was telling the truth. It felt like I'd been punched, but I knew that that was, that's what that meant. He meant to do that. He meant to make me feel um, well, he wanted me to hear him, ultimately, I think. And, you know, that was a real turning point because that statement got me to think into myself, well, I, I thought that I loved myself because, you know, I, I love my family. Right? You know, like, it got me to thinking, like, well, what does that mean? I don't know what it means. Well, do I love my family? And then, you know, I got to thinking, well, how do I feel about people in my life? How do I feel about my life? Hmm. And then it started to all make sense in a hurry. I don't feel good about any of this. I don't feel good about very much. So, you know, that set off a panic inside of me because I thought, how could I have gotten to my age that I am and still not know how to, you know, properly love myself and therefore others. It was, uh, it was definitely a difficult moment and it, but it helped me realize, okay, this all needs to change. I can't stay this way because I just feel horrible. And I don't want to, I don't want to do that anymore. So, you know, yes, <laughs> my Divine Masculine caused me pain by, you know, pushing me away when we were teenagers. But I appreciated once we got to that 2021 story, I appreciated then just why he had to because I still had not yet learned what I needed to learn and it was like he finally after all these years said you know stop you cannot do this to yourself anymore you know like he was not rude or anything but there was an urgency there like like it was as though he if he was with me physically it was almost as though he was taking my face in his hands and saying stop doing what you are doing to yourself don't do that anymore it's hurting it's hurting yourself and it's hurting me because you're not loving yourself, you're hating yourself, and therefore, you know, you're hating me. You know, he didn't say that, but that was what I came to understand uh, after I started studying this stuff and coming up with more information. So, yes, our divine counterparts can be tough. They can say tough things that we don't want to hear and that we get offended by and angry about and all of that. But if you wait long enough and 
reflect on it later, eventually it starts to make sense. Oh yeah, I don't need to, I don't need to be mad at them. They were showing me love and doing me a great service by telling me something difficult that made me feel uncomfortable. Uh, and that, therein lies the main difference between being a, a, in a soulmate connection versus a twin flame connection, right? Twin flames will just say what needs to be said and don't really have time to consider the emotional and interpersonal ramifications of it. They just say what needs to be said because there's an issue here. Um, and that doesn't usually happen between soulmates. So that's why, you know, I could languish in the illness that I had and the, the, the just the pain that I was in um, for all these years. Uh, and still be with a soulmate who I know loved me dearly. Um, but that is why, is because he could not summon that strength to love me enough and say, stop, you cannot keep trying to kill yourself, please. This is devastating, you know, like, no. So. In that way, being in this kind of relationship has been very, very helpful in helping stabilize my sense of self and my mood and everything. It has really, really helped because it's all from within. I don't have, you know, I don't have union <laughs> with my person physically. Uh, that's not happened, uh, but it doesn't matter. What matters is what he helped me figure out. And yes, the message was delivered a little bit with a bit of a stern, you know, tone, but I know that it came from a spirit of, of great love and compassion. And so if you're struggling with anything like that in your life and you're also a divine feminine, or masculine, but likely a feminine. Um, just know that you're, there is a way to snap out of it. Um, I don't want to say snap out of it, that sounds ignorant, uh, but there is a way out because, you know, I've been in that place. I've been in ICU. I've been comatose. I've had to be intubated because, you know, my, I got into, my heart rate got into like 60 over 40 territory. Like they did not know if I was going to wake up or not. Uh, and, you know, that's what they told my husband and my family. You know, we just don't know this time if if she can you know obviously I did <laughs> but I continued to suffer is what I'm trying to say I suffered for a solid 10 years after waking up out of that coma in the hospital and it was my divine masculine coming along and saying, stop 
that. Stop, 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 stop. You know, that was what got me out of it. Not all of the coddling and being treated like I was a delicate, delicate little husk of a person, you know. Once that whole air was dropped because my divine masculine was not a part of that in my life. He didn't see any of that. So for him, it was easy to come in and say, well, stop doing that. You're hating yourself in doing that. That's horrible. Stop. You know, he could just kind of come in and do that. And ultimately, yes, it was painful in the moment. Yes. But it certainly, it's gotten me here. So, from one person who absolutely believed that things were hopeless, um, know that, that they are not. However, I do understand the difficulty in summoning that hope. Very much. Um... So, yeah, this is a difficult subject to discuss. It makes us real uncomfortable. Um, it breaks up families. It breaks up friendships. Breaks up marriages. All of it. It's not fun or easy. But we also need to discuss these matters because we will not understand anything any greater if we don't talk about it, you know, instead of just, you know, they struggled, they have mental health problems, you know, instead of just kind of hush-hushing it, just say what it is. <laughs> and, you know, that way people won't feel so threatened and uncomfortable by a very real and deadly problem. So, I hope that this has been somewhat enlightening anyway. I love you, and your person, of course, loves you. Don't forget that. And they especially love you when you love yourself. And so long as you do that, you will not fall back into those horrible habits of mind that, that keep you down. Right? Yeah, Henry agrees with me. <laughs> anyway, I will see you in the next